Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, there's one good point about winter. Despite the cold weather and the snow, winter gets rid of the pesky skeeters. Oh, the mosquito's a little fellow, all right, but I've never known such a little creature who can be such a big pest. Of course, there aren't any of the pint-sized buzz bombs around Knotty Pine now. They've all been frozen out. But in today's story, which takes place in the summer, our rangers are soon going to get their necks full of the pests as they're called to Central City, a city in the heart of the Southern Forest District. What do you say we travel south ahead of the fellas and hear the story... Sleeping Death. Right now, Dr. Amos Midge stands outside a hospital room pondering the symptoms of one of his patients. He talks with his intern, who is completely puzzled as to what the diagnosis can possibly be. Dr. Midge, I'm stumped. I'd give a lot to know what's wrong with that man. I think you know, Doctor. Why don't you tell me? Yes, I know what it is. It's just that I can't believe it. It's a very unscientific remark. I know. It's the dread of an epidemic that I'm thinking about right now. This horrible disease is carried by our little friend, the mosquito. Mosquito, huh? I know it's not malaria. It couldn't be elephantitis, could it? No, it's not. It's sleeping sickness. It's 50 miles over to the town of Carter. It's there that Dr. Louis LaForge talks with an ambulance attendant in the emergency room of the general hospital. Both men have a grave look on their faces. Some more sleeping sickness, Dr. LaForge? Yes, Ben. It makes the fifth case you've brought in this week. It isn't even a week, just three days. Why are we finding it here in this area of the States? It certainly is rare, but not impossible. They had an outbreak in Indiana not so long ago. What's the cure? <laughs> Profound question, my friend. The cause we know, but the cure we aren't sure of. Some respond, others do not. Those that don't just kind of sleep on and on like living dead. Now let's take another trip to another hospital located to the west of Central City and look in on a staff meeting of the Morris Clinic and Research Foundation. Professor Joel Morris is presiding. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we must call a meeting of all the doctors within a hundred miles of our institution. It has to be determined at once the extent and the seriousness of this sleeping sickness. I hope our fears will not be substantiated. Believe me, I never hoped and prayed for anything in my life more than that this sleeping sickness be restricted to a few people. But we must find out. When do we plan to have the meeting? I'm calling the meeting for Saturday morning. Oh, it's short notice, but we can't afford the delay of a weekend. Our office staff will send special delivery letters to everyone at once and telephone the doctors living too far out. Gentlemen, there isn't any need to use valuable time in surveying further the number of sleeping sickness cases you're now treating, as we're all very much aware that there's but one topic of conversation among us. I agree, Joel. I'd like the chair to appoint committees immediately so we can formulate plans to combat this epidemic. I'll second that. Yes, I agree. Very well, gentlemen. I, I think that's a wise decision. Um, I would like to ask Doctors LaForge uh, and Dr. Midge to join me on plans for mapping preventative measures. And Dr. Klondike... Uh, 
paperwork is necessary to efficient planning, but it doesn't get the job of killing the disease carriers done. That's right, Lewis. But now we've an idea of the area over which the epidemic is spread. Our pencil efforts are ended. Now we're ready for action. Yes, and in record time. I'll call the mayor and the health commissioner and ask them to meet with us in half an hour. I only hope they have the man and equipment to get it. According to the map we've drawn, we've taken in the counties involved, Mayor Peters, and we want to spray this whole area. That's a pretty big order, Dr. Mitch. You mean you can't do it, Mayor? We can do it, Dr. LaForge. It'll take a couple of weeks to cover the area you gentlemen have marked off. Two weeks? That's right. Gentlemen, the mayor isn't telling stories. We have mosquito abatement equipment, but it's small scale. And it takes us at least two weeks to spray the city under normal control measures, working the men eight hours a day. Commissioner, this is extremely urgent. We must spray this area at once. And not this area only. We've got to spray the whole country for 50 miles around and do it quickly. We need more equipment. We need it right now. The longer we wait to kill the pests, the more sleeping sickness cases will break out. Yes, this can't be an ordinary spraying job. Gentlemen, I know this is a serious problem. I'll be glad to work my men night and day and even hire more men to get the spraying done. But I can't make a promise of a sudden and efficient job. Mayor, uh, Commissioner, where can we get more equipment? Professor Morris, I suggest you ask the county and state authorities for help. In the meantime, we'll start spraying the city on a round-the-clock basis. Dr. Midge, I'll gladly give you all the help I can. But the county only has three spraying rigs. Any help you can give us will be valuable, Superintendent. Is it possible to get men and equipment from the surrounding counties? Yes, but their equipment is just as sparse as ours. There are several companies that do this kind of work, too. Fine. We'll get the authority, and then we'll get them spraying, too. Well, don't get too optimistic, Doctor. All the combined equipment we can lay our hands on will not be enough to do the job you need done. We're not equipped to handle an emergency such as this. I've been afraid of that. How long will it take to get the sprayers operating that you can get your hands on? We'll start operations in half an hour. Mr. Secretary, you must be joking. I wish I were, Dr. LaForge. The state hasn't any equipment for frog fogging. We leave that chore up to the county and local city governments. Uncle Sam takes care of the national parks. I'm sorry to hear this. We need equipment, and we need it badly. I'm sorry, too, Doctor. I wish I had a hundred pieces of equipment that I could rush to your area. Uh, Say, uh, why don't you contact the ranger boss in your area? Perhaps he can give you the help you need. I believe you have something there. If the ranger in charge can't help, he might know where we can get the help we need. Be sure and let me know if there's anything I can do. I'll inform the governor. I'm sure he'll be of the same mind. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Gentlemen, uh, my committee has laid all the facts before you. We're making headway, but it's not enough. The whole area within a 50-mile radius of Central City must be sprayed within a week. But who's going to create a miracle? The way we're going, it'll take a month, and every citizen in the area could have sleeping sickness by that time. Well, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, we've been given the suggestion to call in the ranger in charge of the Southern Forestry District. The call is being placed to this gentleman now. I can't make any promises, but it's certainly worth a try. My committee and I will meet her before this hour. Hello, Ranger Headquarters. Ralph Hodges speaking. Mr. Hodges, this is Professor Joel Morris. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. I wondered if you could come to my clinic right away. Yes, I can. Uh, may I ask why the invitation? Yes, you can. We've got a baby epidemic of sleeping sickness on our hands. We need your help to keep the baby from growing up. Mm, You don't say. Well, I'll be in your office in half an hour.
Professor Morris. I'm uh, Ranger Ralph Hodges. Oh, I'm happy to see you made such good time, Mr. Hodges. I'd like you to meet my two colleagues, Doctors Midge and LaForge. Nice right, to meet you, Doctor. Thank you. Sit down, Mr. Hodges, and uh, we'll bring you up to date on our problem. Thank you. As you may or may not know, sleeping sickness is carried by the mosquito. It's very rare for an area such as this, but the facts are that we have an epidemic on our hands. Now, uh, you'll notice that... Now that you know our problem, can you help us? You're our last hope. We're already using all the available equipment we can get for hundreds of miles around. Yes, gentlemen, I can help you. Oh, great. Thank you. What uh, kind of help can you give us? Well, I have two large truck rigs that can fog a thousand acres a day. Wonderful. And I have a fogging device rigged on a small plane. Oh, this is just what we need. How soon can you put your equipment into operation? As quickly as I can get back to headquarters and get my men and equipment back into town. Well, you can leave now if you wish. We can talk with you later after your men and equipment are working. Fine. I'll be on my way then. The sooner we get this plague under control, the better off we'll be. <laughs> returns to headquarters, and within half an hour, the two large trucks and the plane are in operation. He puts his men to work using an efficient plan to cover the country between headquarters and Central City with a killing fog. However, all of the men and doctors haven't been trained like Ralph has. Soon chaos results from good intentions and sincere effort. Some parts of the terrain involved aren't being sprayed at all, and others have been sprayed two and three times by different crews. Professor Morris tries to direct the operation to the best of his ability, but his efforts are futile. He finds Ralph and tells him of the additional problem of lack of coordination and system. Ralph, but what do you suggest we do to get all the men to work together? Professor, what we need is a general. This is an army of men, and they need a leader who knows how to handle this type of operation. You're right. But who will we get to... There aren't any of us who have enough experience for such an operation as this. Wait a minute. Yes, Professor? I've got the man. Well, that's fine. Who is he? You. Oh, no, 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 not me. But I recommend Bill Jefferson of the Northwest Forest District, who could also bring in more equipment. Teletype, will you? Ah, uh, I watch now. Bill, come quick. Yeah? What's up, Grey Wolf? It's a message from Ralph, sonny. He needs help. Great Scott, sleeping sickness. Ah, uh, that plenty bad stuff. What are we going to do, young feller? Stand around with our hands in our pockets? No, we're going to swing into action, old timer. Grey Wolf, will you answer the teletype? Well, Stumpy and I get the men in and ready to move out? Ah, I do right away. Fine. All right, let's get to work, Stumpy. All right, fellas. Stumpy's going to see to it that you fellas get the trucks and flying boxcars and get you and your equipment flying south as soon as possible. You said it, Bill. Let's go, you young whippersnappers. We got a job to do. Now, stop me get trucks to Central City plenty fast. I'll say, Will. Even if he has to fly them there himself. Uh, I think you want us to fly two spray planes down to Central City. Well, that's right. We won't have a co-pilot, a radio man, but I think we'll make it all right. Uh, as long as two engines keep going like clock, we not have trouble. <laughs> that's what counts, all right, Grey Wolf. Well, let's get out to the airport. We'll let the flying boxcars take off first, because we'll be able to get there ahead of them anyhow.
flying boxcar. Yeah, Stumpy got him off in good time, all right. Our planes are ready. Let's take off. Uh, see you in Central City, Bill. Right. Push the throttle as wide open as you can. Professor Morris, uh, nine-tenths of the area assigned to me is sprayed. We haven't got much more to do. Should be finished by uh, six o'clock this evening. Oh, that's good news, Ralph. Over and out. Say there, young fella. We're going to have to pack the boys home in the morning if we work right through the night. Will you have the job done by sunrise, Mr. Jenkins? Well, I don't know for certain. We can sure make it a good race. Anyhow, we'll be finished gassing the skeeters not later than eight in the morning. Good work, Mr. Jenkins. See you in the morning. Bill, I have to hand it to you. You and your man have worked a miracle in getting this spraying job done. Thanks, Professor Morris. We're used to this type of work. It's just a matter of practice. Well, I don't agree, but have it your own way. Say, what about the planes you brought in? You haven't used them yet. We'll use them in the morning. I'm keeping them for the double dose. Also to spray the swamp and river areas. They've got the most powerful fogging equipment made today. They'll cover this whole country in several hours. We'll start while the dew is still on the ground. The Grey Wolf's truck is pulling up in front. Let's see what he wants. Grey Wolf, you're sure fast. Uh, We're not finished yet, Bill. Why not? Why'd you come back? There isn't any swamp where you fellas are supposed to be working. But there are a man by the name of Cy Boone. Huh? What's the matter with him? Cy Boone got his road barricaded. He's standing guard with rifle. Sai's biting off more than he can chew. How far did you go? Central City. And almost all area ten miles around has been sprayed. But this man keep us from finishing job. Professor Morris. Yes? I'm going to be gone for a while. Will you please take over any calls that may come in? All right. I can get you on the radio if I need you. Yes. I'll be out paying a call to Sai Boone. I want to get stumpy and then find out why Sai won't let us spray his land. Size, please. The ornery old cold cat. Uh, he not have much concern for other people. Well, there's always one like Cy Boone in every crowd. If we don't spray his place, the folks for a couple of miles around here will be in danger of catching that there sleeping death. Holy Grey Wolf, there's the roadblock that you told us about. Um, what you do now? I'm going to remove the roadblock. Bring old Betsy along, Stumpy. You don't think I'd leave my rifle behind, do you? Let's go. I'm watching the brush, but I don't see any signs of a human being yet. I didn't know the birds down here carried rifles. You see him yet? Nope. Shot came from my right. He hit one came from the same place. Keep walking. Give Grey Wolf time. Okay. But I ain't hankering to stop one of them there little... Good boy, Stumpy. Drop gun, you. Keep hands up. Walk out into road plenty quick. All right, you. Come on out before I come in and get you. You only got a busted hand. Good work, fellas. Now we can find out what this is all about. Must be that big shot ranger boss they shipped in here. That's right, Boone. What's more, he's used to handling tough guys. So don't try any more shenanigans. Yeah, we'll just wait until my hand gets to feeling better. I wouldn't make any threats, Cy Boone. We don't scare from the likes of you. Now, what's the big idea of blockading your land so we can't spray it? That's my business, Ranger. You all just get up and get. This is private property. I say you ain't sprayed, and that's what I mean. You plenty big fool. You catch sleeping sickness, and then you wish you let us fog. I ain't up to listen to any of your palaver. Now get! All right, let's go, fellas. He's within his legal right. Well, I do declare. A ranger with brains. Don't consider yourself the winner, Boone. I'm coming back with a court order. There 
there's Cybone's place down there. When are we going to get the court order so we can spray his place? I sent Ralph over to the county seat to get it, Stumpy. He should be back by the time we get through his spray. I'd sure like to give Boone's land a dose from up here where it's safer. Hey! Somebody is shooting at us! You're not joking, old friend. I can see somebody standing in the yard down there shooting at us. I'm turning out. I hope Grey Wolf follows us. Yep, he sure is. Whoever's doing the shooting is crazy. I'd sure like to know why Cy Boom won't let us spray his land. Yeah, so would I. We'll find out just as soon as we get the court order in our hands. Yes, sir. Then if old Boone starts acting ornery, we'll put him in the pokey and let him cool off while we cover his place with fog. Hello, operator. This is Professor Morris. Yes. Are you sure? Yes, the ranger just walked in the door. I'll ask them to investigate immediately. Goodbye. What's wrong, Professor? Why, the phone company just called and told me they've been getting calls for help from Cy Boone's place. Well, I say, just ignore it. No, Stumpy. Maybe he changed his mind. Let's go, fellas. Stumpy, you try to knock this apart with some of the tools from the car. Gray Wolf and I'll go on to the house. Okay. If I can break it up, I'll drive up. But don't count on it. We go now. Boone House, plenty of fire, and we run... Half mile now. Yeah. He's got a lot of land. House must be around the bend in the road up ahead. There it is. I can see roof through trees. Rangers. Oh, I'm sure glad you all got here. We could have gotten here sooner if it weren't for your miserable roadblock. What's happened? My wife and son are sick. Must have got what you were talking about. Guess you men were telling the truth. Now I've been a fool, and now how are we going to get them out? Forgot all about that roadblock. We take a look at wife and son, and then we figure a way to get them out. Sure, sure, anything you say. Well, they're in bad shape, Boone. We've got to get them out of here quickly. Oh, what a fool I've been. Why didn't I let you spray my land? And this wouldn't have happened. How will you get them out, Bill? It will get dark now. Maybe small plane land close by, but not in dark. We'll have to take them to the roadblock in Boone's car. Then transfer them to our car. All the handling won't do them much good, but can't be helped. Let's get them out of the car. Listen, Stumpy, get through roadblock. Gentlemen, <clears throat> gentlemen, we have good news for you. There's much to be thankful for. Sleeping sickness is well underway to being controlled. There were two new cases today, but there have been no deaths in the last two days. With the area now completely covered, we can rest more easily. 
And I know you'll want to give Mr. Bill Jefferson and his men a token of your appreciation. Yes. Uh -huh. Mr. Jefferson, we of the medical profession and of the local government of this area, thank you for all you've done. Gentlemen, thank you for your generous applause. But I would remind you that your own leaders were big enough men to invite someone from the outside to come in, and that in itself is commendable. But I do want to add that the whole area accessible by roads has been covered by ground crews and a second dose by the fogging planes. Tell me what happened to Cy Boone's folks, Doctor. Well, they got under care just in time. Well... Doc, you could almost say it was a good thing that those people got sick so as we could get in and spray the land. That's what a man gets for being so stubborn. Well, actually, Mr. Jenkins, the mosquitoes probably did their job of infecting his folks even before the spraying started. Huh? Well, what do you know? And we're fortunate that we didn't run into lots of other folks with the same antiquated ideas. <laughs> Looks like it took sleeping sickness to wake him up. See you next week for more adventure with Ray!